Hello folks. In this video, I'm going to be adding in a way of saving and loading a high score. So at the moment, although it's possible to kill these enemies, the score does increase, but the high score never changes. So to do that, I need first of all to import an extra module. Now underneath where I have import random, I'm going to add import OS. And that's going to allow me to open files to read and write to. And as I'm going to record this high score, I will create an extra file within the same game folder. And that's just going to have the high score. I just need to make sure that I've got my variables defined. So when I start off, I have a high score variable within this define game variable section, which starts at zero. I also have my castle class down here, which has self.score. And this is how the overall game score is tracked. Whenever I kill an enemy, this is the variable that increases. So what I want to do to be able to change this high score is go all the way into the game loop where a level is completed. So this section here where I say move on to the next level when the next level trigger is set to true, I output onto the screen this message level complete. That's the point where I want to update the high score. So actually throughout the level, I'm not going to update it. I'm going to treat the level complete as a sort of milestone. So if you if you finish a level, well, then that's when we up update the high score. So I'll just add a comment here to say update high, get rid of that, update high score. So before I do that, first of all, I need to check is the current score greater than my previous high score? Well, the current score is stored within this castle instance. So I can say if castle.score is greater than the high score variable, which at the moment, remember, is zero. I've just created it at the very beginning of the code. If it is, well, then I can update the high score because now the high score is equal to the current game score. So if I, I'm not going to save it just now. I just want to run this to make sure it works correctly. So I'll add in a bunch of towers to help me complete the level quickly. And you can see the score is increasing. So let's just kill all these guys off. And as soon as I've done that, this should pop up. And there we go. So now the level is complete. The high score is now recorded as 900. So I keep killing them. The score keeps going up, but it won't update my high score until uh, I finish the second level. So we do that. And... There we go, high score is now 2000. So I know that this part is working correctly and the high score is being updated. What I need to do is actually save that into a local file. So to do that, I just need to add a couple extra lines of code. Now normally when you're working with files, if you're opening or uh, if you're saving or loading, you need to make sure that you open a file and then once you've done the work with it, you close the file afterwards. It's easy to make a mistake there and forget to do that and that's going to uh, give you errors. So you do this within a container. So what I'll do is say with open and then within here I put in the name of my file. So I'll say score.txt. Now note at the moment I don't actually have a file called score.txt. Now I open it to write to. Uh, this just means that if there is no file that exists then Python is going to create that file for me. So I don't really need to do a check, first of all, to say whether it exists or not. And I open it as file. So with that done, I go into my next line where I say file, which is what I've just opened it as, file.write, so I can write the information into it. And what I want to write in is just my high score. That's all I want. I just take that variable and put it in here. But before I do that, I need to convert it into a string. So I say string underscore high score. So now, this is going to create, if I just close all these down so it's a bit clearer. Now I've got all of these different uh, sections of code for all these tutorial videos, but typically you're just going to have one line of, or one Python script. You'll have your button.py, enemy.py, and at the moment, nothing else. But when I run this, uh, whoops, I've done something wrong here. Forgot to close my brackets. Okay, so yeah, so now I've got my string brackets closed and then the outer brackets for the writing. Now I have my score at zero. I'm going to add a bunch of towers to help me and I'll just start shooting these guys. So when I complete the level, my high score has changed and I, you may have noticed just very briefly this file appeared. So it didn't exist before, but now I have a file here called score.txt and it just has one number in it and that's 800, which was my high score. So that's good. That's working fine. But if I run this game again, my high score is still zero. So every time I run this, it still starts off at zero. And that is simply because I am i don't have a section yet for loading that file back in and checking, do I have a score previously? So that means that before I even get to this point, I need to first of all, read that file. 
I need to take my high score out of this. So I go all the way back up to the start. And here where I've got my game variables, remember, I have a bit here that says high score equals zero. So this is just me defining it to begin with. But I also now want to be able to go into that file and see if there is another high score in there. So just below all of my variables where I finish them, I want to add a comment to say load high score. And the code is going to be more or less the same. I'm going to say with, but this time it's open. Uh, sorry, it's the same, but uh, I changed this to uh, read instead of write. So I say score.txt, same as I had before, but now this section, instead of a W, it's going to be R for read. So open it as file. So just the same as before. And then here, I'm going to be reading from the file. So my high score variable becomes the integer value. Remember, I saved it as a string. So it's the integer value of file.read. So I'll read in that line from this file, which I've just opened, which is my score.txt, convert that into an integer and assign it into my high score variable. So that high score was something like 800, 800 or 900. So if we run this again, there we go. The high score is already there. I already have an existing high score. So I'll add a bunch of towers just to help me again. And I'll probably need to get through a couple of levels just to make sure that this actually updates. So the high score is 800. Uh, this level had more enemies. So 1000 is the new high score. Close that down, open the file, and there we go. It's 1000. Run this again. And now the high score is 1000. So that's working well, but what if I don't have this file to start with? So let's just delete this. Because remember, that only gets created after a level is complete. Let's run this again. And suddenly I have an error. It says no such file or directory score.txt. So this section here is trying to open that file, but the file doesn't exist, so it gives me an error. That means that what I want to do is first of all, check does a file exist before I try to open it. I'll wrap this in an if statement. If os.path dot exists. So this is why I imported that OS module. And then the path here is just score.txt. Now the reason I don't have to add in anything else is because it is in is going to be in the same folder as my game code just down here. If I had this in another folder, I would need to make sure that I put in the full directory for it. So I say if that file exists, then indent this correctly, then we can go ahead and open it, extract the high score from it. But if it doesn't exist, well, actually, I don't think I need to do anything. My high score is already defined at the beginning as zero. So let's run this again. The high score doesn't exist. So this runs in fine. I have a high score of zero. Create a bunch of towers. And it's not going to update until I kill all of them. So now high score is 900. You may have noticed this just appeared. Close this down and I run it again. And the high score is 900. So that's how you add in a fairly simple high score system into the game. Now the only other thing that this game is still uh, needs to have added to it is a game over condition. At the moment, if these enemies come all the way to the castle and they start destroying it, when I get to zero on health, nothing changes. It just gets stuck on zero, but they keep attacking and the level just gets stuck. And in fact, I can keep shooting them. So although I'm on zero health, I could still complete this level. I can build a bunch more towers. I notice they're all coming in broken kill all these guys, level's complete, and then move on to the next one with zero health. So that's kind of uh, a bit of a fault here. So I need to add in some kind of game over condition. Uh, to do that, I want to add in, first of all, an additional variable. Uh, in fact, I already have this variable. I must have added in previously. So I've got this game over equals false. I can now use this variable to control what is happening within the game loop. So if I go down to my main game loop, there's quite a little bit of code in here now, but basically, all of the updates are happening here. So I'm blitting all the stuff onto the screen, I'm creating the castle, I'm allowing it to shoot, my towers are being controlled, I'm allowing the buttons to be controlled, so the enemies are being generated, so all of this kind of stuff is happening when, uh, well, just within the game loop. But what I can do is wrap all of it within that game over variable. So right at the beginning, below this clock.tick, I, I do want this to pretty much always happen, but below that, I can add an if statement to say if game over equals uh, false. So as long as the game is not over, basically, as long as the game is running, highlight pretty much everything. Go all the way down uh, up to the event handler. So all of the code above the event handler, indent that, and now all of that is within this game over condition. So as long as game over is false, all of this is going to keep running. That means that I need a way of setting game over to true. 
I don't have one at the moment, so this condition is always going to be met. But once I add that in, it means that as soon as the castle is destroyed, this section of the code above is all going to stop running. So I can just add that check in within the same section. So you notice the, just make sure the indentation is correct. So all of these things are indented up to this point here. So below that, come out to here and say check game over. And the game over condition is simple. It's just whenever the castle health drops to zero. I can say if castle.health is less than or equal to zero, then game over becomes false. So let's run this again and let the enemies come all the way over to the castle. In fact, you know what, I'm going to speed them up because it's going to take a little while otherwise. Uh, to speed them up, I should be able to go into the section where I generate enemies. Yep, and right at the end is this variable here. So I'll just set this to three for now so that they're really quick. <laughs> there they go. Okay, so now these guys are going to come in and start destroying the castle. And once I get to zero, nothing's really going to happen in terms of feedback, but it should all pretty much just freeze up. But it didn't. So what have I done wrong? So if castle health is less than zero, game over becomes false. That is... <laughs> This is what happens when you try and type and talk at the same time. Game over becomes true, not false. So at that point, the game over condition is met. Okay, second try. Now these guys come over, attack the castle, and hopefully this time, once they destroy it, get it down to zero, everything this time should freeze. And there we go. So everything's frozen up. Uh, I can't shoot anything. I can't even move the mouse anymore. Uh, but that's it. The game over condition is being met. So I can add a little bit more code to it just to well, make that a bit more useful rather than just freezing the whole game up. And basically what I can say is if the game over condition is now true, then I can add in the additional steps for that stage. Uh, now remember, this is all handled already within an if statement. So I already have this if game over is false. That means that if I just go in line with that indentation, I can just add an else statement. So I can say here else, which basically means as long as the condition, uh, so all of that above happens if the game over is set to false, well, if it's not false, i.e. if it's true, then we execute the code that's within this else statement. The first thing I want to do is give some player feedback. So I'll put on draw text. And here I will say game over. I will use my font and I will say gray color 300 on the X coordinate, 300 on the Y coordinate. And then underneath that, I will add some instruction to the player. This is going to say press A to play again. Uh, same coordinate, uh, sorry, same code, but the coordinates are going to be a little bit different. So this text is a bit longer, so it starts on the left and it's going to drop slightly below the other text. So I'll have some feedback onto the screen. Now remember, the other thing was that I couldn't move the mouse anymore. Well, I actually could move the mouse, it's just that the mouse was hidden and the crosshair wasn't moving. So I just need to unhide the mouse. And uh, remember, this was done with pygame.mouse.set underscore visible. So this trigger allows me to hide or show the mouse. If I set it back to true at this point, then the mouse becomes visible again. So you'll be able to see and you'll be able to move around the screen. The next thing I want to do, because I'm saying here, press A to play again, well, I want to actually be able to take that keyboard input in. So to take keyboard inputs, I'll say key equals pygame.key.get underscore pressed. And that's going to give me any of the keys that are being pressed on the keyboard, but I'm only looking for the letter A being pressed. So I can say if key pygame dot k underscore a. So this is basically what controls what button you want. So you keep all this the same, but here I will say if I want a, it's a. If I want space, I can change it to space or space bar. Uh, b, basically just whatever you want the keyboard input to be, that's what you put in here. So if the a button is pressed, then I want to be able to reset my game over. So before I even go that far, let's just add a print statement here. Uh, and just do it in stages. So we'll say game uh, game restart. And I'm going to lower the castle's health temporarily just so it takes a little bit less time to kill it. So we'll start off with just 100 so it'll be killed very quickly. So it starts off pretty much broken already. These guys come over, attack it. Okay, the castle is dead. I can move the mouse so at least it doesn't feel like the whole thing is just hung up. I've got a little bit of text feedback here, and if I press A, I should get feedback down here. There we go, game restart. So I'm registering what's going on now. 
And now I basically need to add in the code for restarting the level. Or in fact, I'll restart the whole game because you kind of restart all the way back at the beginning. So get rid of this print game restart. And a reset basically just means I need to reset all of my variables to whatever the starting conditions were. So I can add a little comment to say reset variables. And the first one is game over. So if I've pressed A to play again, well, game over is no longer true. It is back to false. So that means that all the stuff in the main game loop is going to restart again and the game is going to keep going. I also want to set the level back to one because we're restarting again. So level is one. The Remember there was a target difficulty. So this is the difficulty that I'm aiming for with each level. Well, because the level is back to one, target difficulty is also back to the starting value of a thousand. Level difficulty also goes back to zero because this is controlled by how many enemies are on the screen. So this is going to allow me to generate the full number of enemies. I also need to reset my timer for the enemies. So my last enemy equals pygame.time.getTicks. So I take that timestamp again and basically say that I haven't got any enemies yet. So let's start the counter all over again. Then I need to delete all the enemies that are on the screen already. So enemy underscore group. And this is where the groups come in kind of handy because I can just say dot empty and that will delete all of the instances from that group. The same goes for towers. So you may have created a bunch of towers and you've gotten really far in the game, but now it's game over, you reset, so you've got to start back at the beginning again. So you empty that group also. You also got to remember to reset your score. You can't just keep going and increasing the score after a game over. So the castle's score becomes zero. We reset the castle's health again. So castle.health becomes a thousand. And the money has to be reset back to zero as well. So castle.money becomes zero. And then lastly, I need to hide my mouse again so that I can use that crosshair. Pygame.mouse.set underscore visible and set back to false. And that's pretty much it. That should be all of my game over resets done. So let's run this again and let them run up to the castle. They'll destroy the castle. And now I get the prompt. I can still move the mouse. And when I press A, everything goes back to the start. So money score is back to zero, I'm back to level uh, level one. The health again is up to a thousand. So in fact, I guess what I could do is get a bunch of towers. Oh yeah, I have no money. Okay, I can't afford to do that. But anyway, the, the code is working. Uh, I have noticed a little mistake here though. My health is out of 100 rather than out of 1000. That's simply because when I created the castle, I temporarily changed the, uh, the max health to uh, to 100 or the health and the max health to 100 so one variable that i've missed out here where i'm resetting my castle health i also need to reset my castle max health so castle max underscore health is equal to castle dot health so if i run this again now it starts with 100 and 100 just temporarily but once they destroy the castle and i restart the game it goes to a thousand a thousand so if you'd upgraded the castle a lot beforehand then you don't get to keep those upgrades. It goes back to the starting condition. So let's just go back up, make sure I reset those variables. Uh, the first one was my castle. So the castle health needs to be uh, 1000. The money, well, we start off with no money. And the enemies, when I was creating instances of the enemies within the main game loop down here, I need to make sure that I set their speed back to one. Run this again. And there we go, everything's back to how it was. I have a high score, enemies are being generated. I can't afford to do any of this just yet, but if I start shooting these guys, I can build up a bit of cash, start upgrading the castle and progress through the levels that way. And that's pretty much it. That's how you create this uh, castle defender game from scratch in Python. So if you found this tutorial series useful, then please leave a like and feel free to subscribe as it, it does help the channel and encourages me to continue creating more of these. So again, thanks for watching.